There's a supermassive black hole at the center of every galaxy. Yeah, yeah. But there's think. also other black holes that aren't necessarily in the center of galaxies. Yeah, so these little ones, well, little, you know, little. <laughs> the, um, <laughs> they're, they're a few times the mass of the sun, and they're from collapsed stars. So they are stars at the end of their life, very bigger than the sun, more massive than the sun, but they run out of their fuel and they start to collapse. It's one thing to learn about black holes from a textbook, but to truly understand their power, let's do a little thought experiment, shall we? Let's close our eyes for a moment and try to imagine what it would be like to be sucked into a black hole ourselves. Or better yet, let's imagine it happening to someone else. Let's use Jasmine as our hypothetical situation. Jasmine is a space adventurer. She grew up dreaming of exploring the far reaches of space and discovering new worlds. And now that she's a space pilot, she's finally going to make her dreams a reality. Jasmine is on a routine mission in space and she notices something odd on her galactic space map. Being a curious and intrepid explorer, however, she allows her ship to drift in closer and closer to this strange blip on her screen. Suddenly, Jasmine feels a jolt as her ship is caught in an incredibly strong gravitational pull. Her thrusters scream in protest as she tries to pull back from the strange cosmic object, but it's too late. She's already wandered way too close. At first, she feels only a tingling sensation, but then her body begins to stretch. Her bones creak and groan under the immense tidal force. She tries to scream as her body is pulled apart, but even her voice is sucked up into the vacuum of space. The molecules making up her body are unraveled, and her very unconsciousness fades into nothingness. The last thing she sees is the swirling vortex of the black hole's event horizon, a whirlpool of death and destruction that promises nothing but oblivion. And then, absolutely nothing. Jasmine is gone forever, consumed by her curiosity and by the incredible power of a black hole. Her dreams, memories, and legacy completely erased. Meanwhile, the black hole continues to spin and twist a silent sentinel in the void of space awaiting its next victim. Back in the 18th century, there was this brilliant scientist named John Mitchell. He came up with a concept known as dark stars, which we now call black holes. You see, John was a true space nerd who was obsessed with learning everything about stars and their mysteries. One day, he was just sitting there in his chair, and he came up with a crazy idea. He thought, what if there were stars that were so massive that not even light could escape their strong gravitational pull? And that single thought would change the face of astrophysics forever. While he pondered this idea, he realized that such massive stars would be invisible to the naked eye, since no light could escape their gravitational pull. He called these objects dark stars. Over the next few years, Mitchell delved deep into the mathematics and physics of his hypotheses producing a groundbreaking paper that proposed the existence of dark stars. Although Mitchell's work laid the foundation for the future of black holes, it wasn't until the early 20th century that the German physicist Karl Schwarzschild provided the first exact solution to the equations of general relativity for a non-rotating, spherically symmetrical object, which we now refer to as the Schwarzschild radius. The discovery of the Schwarzschild radius was a crucial step in the discovery of black holes. Schwarzschild himself first derived the concept in 1916, just a year after the publication of Einstein's theory of general relativity. Schwarzschild's calculations showed that if a massive object could be compressed into a small enough volume, its gravitational pull would become so strong that even light couldn't escape. This was the first theoretical prediction of dark stars, which we now call black holes. The Schwarzschild radius plays a crucial role in the study of the event horizon of a black hole, which is the boundary beyond which nothing can escape from a black hole, including light and most definitely not Jasmine. It is located at the Schwarzschild radius for a non-rotating, spherically symmetric black hole. Any object that crosses the event horizon is said to be swallowed by the black hole, and its fate is forever sealed in its bottomless belly. But they collapse to such an extent that there's a region around it where, from which light can't escape, and that's a, so nothing can escape, and that, that's a black hole. Let's rewind back to the year 1967, when the professor of physics at Princeton University was giving a lecture to some really, really, really smart people about general relativity. All eyes were on him as he struggled to explain a mysterious phenomenon he had been researching for years, but had never managed to explain fully. No matter how hard he tried, he couldn't find the right words to describe what he had in his mind. 
For decades, physicists had been grappling with the idea of a region of space from which nothing could escape, not even light. This region was thought to be created by the gravitational collapse of a massive star, but no one had been able to come up with a satisfactory name for it. As the professor stood at the podium, his mind raced, trying to come up with a suitable name for this incredibly odd phenomenon. He thought to himself, it's like a void, a nothingness. It's like a, a black hole. The words came out of his mouth before he had time to finish his thought. We'll call it a black hole, he said, looking at the stunned faces of the audience. There was a moment of silence as the physicist took in what he had just said. Then, slowly but surely, the term black hole began to spread throughout the scientific community. That professor was John Wheeler. Completely collapsed star, something we might call a black hole. This one moment would forever make him the famous man who named one of the most enigmatic and mysterious objects in the universe. The term black hole would later be used to describe the first ever massive object detected that was so dense that not even light could escape, Cygnus X1. And what happens to them? Do they travel? Are they moving through space? Yeah, they're, 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 they're still stars, right. uh, you know, so they're, they're still there. Um, they're, they're surrounded, this region where if you fall in, it's called the event horizon. And if you go across that horizon, then you are going to the center. There's one way of thinking about it, which is quite cool, which is that uh, the time and space sort of flip is one way to think about it. So in the same way that we are going into the future now, so, so we're going to tomorrow. There's nothing we can do about it. We are going to tomorrow. In the early 1960s, a team of scientists led by Riccardo Giacconi and Herbert Gursky were conducting X-ray observations of the sky using a series of X-ray telescopes. Their goal was to study the X-ray emissions from various sources, including the moon and other celestial objects. In 1964, the team launched an Aerobee sounding rocket equipped with an X-ray detector to observe the X-ray emissions from the moon. However, their instrument detected an unexpected source of X-rays coming from the constellation Cygnus. Further observation by other X-ray telescopes, including the Uhuru satellite, revealed that the source of X-rays was a binary star system located about 6,000 light years away. The system consisted of a massive blue supergiant star and an unseen companion, which was later identified and termed a black hole. The discovery of Cyrus X-1 was a major milestone in astrophysics back in the day. For the first time ever, there was concrete proof that black holes existed. Many scientists now think that black holes are present in most galaxies, if not all of them. In fact, there's evidence that suggests that every galaxy might contain a supermassive black hole. Crazy, right? Supermassive black holes are the most common type of black hole found in every galaxy and have masses ranging from millions to billions of the mass of our sun, like the Sagittarius A at the center of the Milky Way galaxy. This next clip is an interview with Leah Medeiros, the co-lead of the HT Gravitational Working Group. She's one of the scientists that helped capture the first image of a black hole in our galaxy. She is one of the astronomers who helped make this remarkable discovery possible. How are you all feeling and how long did it take you to get this spectacular image? We are really thrilled. Um, a little relieved also, it has been a lot of work over many, many years. Um, the Sag A star image that we published today, we actually took that data at the same time that we took the data that was published for the M87 image. Um, so we've had the data since 2017. Um, so it took you know that amount of time until today to publish that image. Um, there are several reasons why Sag A star is a little more complicated to image than M87, but we are all very, very excited um, to finally be able to share with, with everybody what the black hole at the center of our galaxy looked yeah. like. These cosmic black holes are thought to have formed through the accretion of matter over long periods of time as gas and dust from the surrounding galaxy fall into the black holes and release tremendous amounts of energy in the form of radiation and jets of high energy particles. There are also smaller, stellar mass black holes that form from the collapse of massive stars. These are the most commonly found in the Milky Way galaxy and other galaxies like it. Here's a clip of Joe Rogan and the American theoretical physicist, Brian Greene, discussing black holes being at the center of every galaxy. So they're a fundamental quality of the world, but they're also in the center of every galaxy. It seems to be the case the Sloan Digital Sky Survey did a wonderful study of a vast number of galaxies 
and I've seen these wonderful images where they put like a little red circle around all those galaxies that have a black hole in their center and there are red circles all over that imagery. So it seems to be a ubiquitous quality that black holes are at the center of galaxies and those are typically gargantuan black holes, millions or billions of times the mass of the sun. However, scientists were still curious to find out what the first black hole really was and how it might have formed. Let's travel back to the early 1970s when two total brainiacs, the physicist Stephen Hawking and the astronomer Bernard Carr, came up with an incredibly interesting idea about primordial black holes. They thought that way back in the early universe, there were these little fluctuations in matter density that created pockets of super high density. And because they were so dang dense, they just collapsed under their own gravity and boom, black holes were born. Yep, it's a wild concept, one that totally changed the way we think about black holes and how they came to be. These primordial black holes would have had masses ranging from a few grams to several tens of thousands of solar masses and would have formed during the first second or two of the universe's existence. Hawking and Carr's proposal of primordial black holes was a revolutionary idea at the time, as it suggested that black holes could have formed through a completely different process than the collapse of stars. They also suggested that these primordial black holes would have merged to form larger black holes. As these black holes continued to merge and accrete more matter, they would have grown in mass and eventually become the supermassive black holes that are observed in the centers of many galaxies. Scientists have become aware of this phenomenon exhibited by black holes as a result of the discovery of the first direct gravitational wave observation. LIGO, you know, this laser interferometer gravitational wave observatory, gravitational waves, it, it took headlines a few years ago when it detected the first ripples in the fabric of space. It detected them from two black holes. Mm -hmm. that were 1.4 billion light years away. The discovery of these primordial black holes could have a profound implication for our comprehension of the universe and its evolution. This enigmatic substance, which is undetectable, yet accounts for a significant amount of the universe's mass, could potentially be explained by primordial black holes. Furthermore, the existence of primordial black holes would provide valuable insights into the universe's earliest moments. By studying their formation and properties, we could learn about the physical conditions and evolution of the early universe. Additionally, their impact on the formation and evolution of cosmic structures, such as galaxies, could offer significant insights into the large-scale structure of the universe. Studying these primordial black holes could advance our ability to detect gravitational waves and explore space. Imagine for a second how totally awesome that would be. But you know what's even cooler about these black holes? They could open up our understanding of the origins of the universe and everything that exists. Discovering these primordial black holes would be a huge deal and an absolutely mind-blowing development. Did you enjoy this video? Why not give it a thumbs up and check out our other videos? If you're new to the channel, consider subscribing so you don't miss out on future ones. Thank you for watching Factnomenal.